What's going on YouTube? So I've been over here tinkering with these uh, HG2879Cs for a little while now and I just wanted to show you some of the results. So the reason I built this is because I've always wondered, you know, what kind of power can these things do? Um, what kind of tune do they like? How, you know, how, how do I make these little guys happy? So I figured I'd show you because I'm getting some pretty decent results. They, they put out a lot of power. It just takes a whole ton of power going in to get them. So, uh, we got the two transistors and push-pull. Um, let's see, what do we got going on here? Okay, let's start at the start. So I got my audio generator that is feeding audio frequency into the radio so we can look at the scope and get a sine wave and get some decent peak measurements and all that. Um, this radio is kind of a custom special. It's got motor mouth malls, modulator board in it, um, plus a bunch of other stuff uh, of my own design. And that is feeding into a Texas Star 2290 uh, one pill as a driver so we got the reflex slug 10 watt reflect that's right there I might flip that around show you the drive and all that swap it out for a 50 watt slug whatever I gotta do to show you the drive um, and that's going into the input of the board so the input of the board it's got the typical stuff it's got the shunt capacitor and yeah, yeah. anyway I'm not gonna cover all the technical details of this there are just too many um, and then we got the output and that is going into this bird meter here with a thousand watt slug and then that's going over to the dummy load. New dummy load. Uh -huh. More power. Um, we got an amp meter over here so we can monitor our current draw. So right now I've got this uh, these transistors biased, the whole amp biased up to one amp. So each, each of those transistors is pulling a half an amp through the DC supply to get it biased up and ready. Um, let's click the on button and see what we're doing here. Okay, so that's the waveform. Um, let's see what we're doing over here. Okay, so this is average power. We're running about 200 watts average. Oh, that's the 250 slug. Let me swap that out. So that's about 50 watts average. Alright, so that's the 1000 watt slug. Let's put that one in there. Look at that on average. All right, so we got about a 50 watt average. Um, if I turn off the modulation, with modulation, without modulation, okay, so it's around 50 watt carrier. Uh, let's go into peak mode. Okay, so peak is around two something. Let's crank that up. So that's about 400 peak watts. Uh, we're drawing about 18 amps. It's giving us a little over 100 average watts, somewhere around 100 average watts. That's our waveform. So 400 peak, that's our waveform. Let's see how hard we can push it though. Yep. It's about 500 peak watts. That's what our waveform looks like. Super compressed. Drawing about 21 amps. And uh, let's see what we are doing for drive. Okay, so first of all, this is our reflect on a 10 watt slug. It ain't even moving. And that's because I sat here and tuned it perfectly. Uh, let's pop this slug out. Let's put a 50 watt. Actually, let's put the 250 in because I know we're running more than 50 watts peak into this board. Okay, so 250 watt and forward for the drive. Uh, we're getting about 500 peak on the output. Let's see what... Uh, see what we're doing on the input okay so average power that's uh... what is that 250 it's uh... 25 watts average drive let's go into peak mode okay what is that that's uh... 75 80 watts so 80 watts peak going in gets you about 500 out so these transistors are quite capable they uh... they make some noise so to speak um, I'm kind of surprised. I think that they uh, they do a pretty dang pretty dang good job. They're decent transistors for the price, but uh, they're still transistors. They suffer transistor problems, low efficiency, low gain. Um, but you know they they work, man. They do. I don't know what kind of SWR they can handle. I don't know how much abuse they can handle. Um, you know, I just I don't know that, and I'm not going to find out because I don't really have any interest in building amplifiers with transistors you know bipolars 
So, like I said, this is just a fun, fun project. You know, maybe one of these days I'll build myself a big amp, build a bunch of two pill sections, and you know, make like an eight pill or something. I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what I was able to get out of these transistors and how much drive it took and all that stuff. Um, so I, I've mentioned this before, but the the power gain on these is really low. So say for example, you put in one watt, you get about 10 watts out. You put in um, uh, 10 watts, you, you get about 100 watts out, and then once you start passing 100 watts, it, it diminishes drastically. So if we're putting 80 something watts and getting 500, that's a pretty low power gain. Um, but this amplifier is tuned for PEP. So um, you can tune this for a lower power and uh, a little bit more reliability on the transistors. So say for example you didn't want to push 500 watts out of these, you could retune this amp so that um, it's, it's not capable of making that much power and it'll, it'll have a higher gain and it'll also be more durable and have a, a better tolerance for improperly matched loads. So anyway, I just thought that was kind of cool and figured I'd show you some of the results that I'm getting with these transistors. Um, I'm going to do a video on this later on, so I'm going to talk about this pallet, how I used it, what I used it for, what I did, how I figured out what capacitors, what transformers. I'm going to go over the whole shebang when it comes to building a, a push-pull amp with bipolar transistors. Um, there's a lot to it, but I'm going to try and cover it as best as I can, and uh, I'll get to that when I get to that, because uh, <laughs> that, that, that's a deep rabbit hole to go down, you know, what, what all these little components do. Uh, how, how to select the right ones. That, that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty involved topic, but I'll get to it. In the meantime, I'm my Doug Sharkey, and uh, I'll be back with another video one of these days. Thanks for watching. I just thought of something I want to add to this video. So, in every amplifier topic or thread or video, there's always that one dude that's like. Oh, you're building splatter boxes? That's, that's cool splatter box, bro. You're, you're gonna go mess with everybody's television. Oh, great, great, great plan. Uh, do, 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 do. So, you know that there, there's a lot wrong with that, and I'm, I'm gonna try and clear it up real quick. So, splatter, splatter is one thing. Splatter comes from your radio, and splatter can come from a bad pairing of a radio and amplifier. Splatter is splatter is when you're, you're transmitting outside of your bandwidth. So, you know, most most frequencies you have like a three kilohertz. You can go up to three kilohertz audio bandwidth, and then that's that's your limit. So splatter is when you go beyond that and you start splattering on adjacent channels. That's splatter. That, that's that's all that splatter is. Splatter isn't TV interference. Splatter isn't out of band transmissions. Splatter isn't harmonics. Splatter is splatter. Now, if we want to talk about splatter, that's a radio problem. That, that, that's just a funky radio, you know, you clip your limiter or something and your audio bandwidth goes through the roof and you start talking on 10 channels at the same time. Now, if you want to talk about out-of-band transmissions and harmonics, you know, I, I showed this thing doing 500 watts. Let's look at the harmonics at 500 peak watts. 500 peak. Okay? Here's our waveform. We're gonna zoomy, zoom, zoom, zoom. There are no noticeable harmonics in that sine wave. None whatsoever. Not at the peaks, not at the valleys. There are no visible harmonics, which means... Which means that the harmonics on this amplifier are, are pretty freaking good. Um, with bipolar transistors, they don't operate much higher than, you know, 30 megahertz or so. So they don't really make that much harmonic content. They, they don't. LDMOS, on the other hand, is capable of operating up to 400-something megahertz, gigahertz even, so that that's a whole other story. But these transistors, they don't make harmonics very well, they just don't like to do it. So, uh, what you saw just a minute ago is a very pure sine wave. Okay, so if we were to look at, look at that on a spectrum analyzer, there might be a hint of harmonics that are out of band, something in the 54 megahertz range, something in the in the 76 megahertz range, um, there might be a little, little tiny little spike, but uh, overall, that's a very pure sine wave, and um, these devices are capable of doing that. These devices are capable of building an amplifier that's very low in harmonic content without any type of filtering whatsoever. So, if it, if your stuff is splattering, <laughs> that's a radio problem. 
if you're if you're transmitting out of band if you've got harmonics um, that could be your radio as well actually you know some radios they get peaked and tweaked and they they start spitting out harmonics uh, amplifiers like this they're capable of making harmonics but a properly tuned one like this is going to be very very low in harmonic content but anyway I just had to go on that little rant. Uh, my Doug Sharkey, and I'm back out for now.